Welcome back. And we're happy to be back too. We've been traveling. We've been gone. Well, we've been home for about a week, two weeks. Yeah, I think two about weeks. that. But we went and did a delivery and... We went to Denver. Colorado, basically. We traveled from one side to the other. Yep, went to Grand Junction. Yeah. Had a delivery of a couple trucks to do. Yeah. Uh, we can probably post that video sometime if you guys want to see it. We took little hints there and there. It was our first trip to Denver and their Rocky Mountains. We lived in the Rockies before. In, in, uh, in Idaho and Montana. Yeah. yeah. But never had, we've never been to Colorado, so that was really pretty. And a nice time of year. And the weather was absolutely perfect for us. We didn't even have a snowflake hardly in the sky except for 10 minutes. So when you're driving, I mean, that's great. You know, Except you for on the way back. We, but I'm saying when we were in Colorado, we didn't yes. have any bad weather in the mountains, and it was so nice. On the way back, we were trying to beat a storm. We visited some friends in there, so, uh, some uh, XJWs. And, uh, My bestie. Anyway, they were uh, <laughs> on our way back. We had to kind of ha take off a little earlier than we wanted, but we wanted yeah. to beat the storm back. And uh, we just caught the front edge of it, or I should say the front edge of it caught us just at the state line pretty much to North yeah. Dakota. Welcome home. Welcome home with the snow and ice. And it wasn't like pretty snow. It was freezing rain. To and start with. As soon as we got to Jamestown, North Dakota, and thankfully there was no traffic, but we were like 60 feet sliding through the intersection, and it's like, well, I guess we should be a little more it careful. Was, it was solid ice, so for Cars four hours. Cars are like winging off into the ditch. Anyway. Yep, four hours. But that's our... That's why we've been away, or we have been away. Um, but we had an email... That we and wanted to. They asked a question, a kind of a video re recommendation, I guess. They were asked about if we could do a, a recommendation. I mean, asked us if we would do a video about this subject. <laughs> right. And we want to thank them for that. That gets us an opportunity to, uh, you know, in the cold and our whining about Langdon. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to get out of our sweatpants and let our hair down yeah put makeup on we're not wearing makeup and do my hair I don't know if you guys know but my hair is really long it's like marriage you know it's commitment it takes deep conditioning maintenance sometimes you feel like just chopping it off <laughs> <laughs> no, Dolly, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Both the marriage and your hair. Yeah. No, but we do thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us an idea to do a, a video. And we want to say that uh, we do appreciate individuals who give us ideas just to uh, uh, help us out in that regard. What we do not appreciate, though, is individuals who attempt to try to control the narrative or... Uh, control how or what we should and should not talk about on our platform. Uh, for instance, we got a great suggestion once that was about suicide. You know, do do a video on suicide and how witness beliefs that you're going to be resurrected in a new world um, leads to people committing suicide. Well, I had to honestly write back that, quite honestly, that's less of a motivation for suicide than all of Christianity, Christendom combined, because each one of those believes that if you die, you go directly to heaven. You get it, a greater reward right now. You get the greater reward right now. And, and so that's, and I used to use that, one of the two jokes that I would tell in my ministry is uh, a guy's in church and uh, he's he comes into church. He's got a black trench coat on, and he sits down. I might have told you guys this joke before, but he sits down, and the the priest, pastor, whatever you want to call him, he's up there giving his sermon, and he says, "Who wants to go to heaven?" And everybody in the congregation raises their hand except for this guy. Well, the pastor preacher notices this, and so a little later on in his uh, sermon, he says, uh, "So who wants to go to heaven?" He works that in, and everybody raises their hand except that guy. And once again, he sees that and he says, uh, well, how about you? Why, why don't you uh, raise your hand? You don't want to go to heaven? And he says, nope. And none of you guys do either. And I can prove it. Not even you. And the preacher kind of says, well, if that's the case, well, come on up here and, and prove it then. 
And so the guy walks up there, stands behind the lectern, flips back his trench coat, pulls out two forty fives, and says, who wants to go to heaven? And nobody raises their hand, including the preacher. <laughs> so that's really uh, the illustration of the vast amount of Christendom believes that if they die, for persecution especially, they're going to go to heaven right now. Well, witnesses believe they're dead in the ground until the resurrection, so it really doesn't fit. So it took us a while to get to the point of understanding maybe where that person was coming from because they I don't believe they were witnesses but it's a great subject matter to cover and we did come up with a couple of videos that we could do about suicide that focus on not necessarily the doctrine of, of Jehovah's Witnesses near as much as the policy policy slash doctrine of unbiblical shunning mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the biblical um, I shouldn't even say shunning. I should say excommunication. Um, that's because that's exactly what they're doing is the old excommunication as opposed to the uh, biblical choice to not fellowship with someone uh, as an individual. So that just kind of gives an illustration of the difference uh, uh, you might run into. Or there's another guy that uh, had a problem with the, me mentioning that I didn't wear my seatbelt before. And I wanted to give some backstory about that. And he said, you shouldn't have said that about the seatbelts. Uh, you lost me there, bro. Well, if you're paying attention to the video, instead of getting emotionally sidetracked, which is what he did on his own viewpoint of seatbelts, he tried to control our narrative. And I tried to correct him on this and, and even tell him, no, listen, that's narcissistic. It's narcissistic to get on our platform and he even said, it's a captive audience and you know talking and you can read it it's in that video about uh where i mentioned that the seatbelt issue and now look we're drawing attention to it again just to make a point but i'm not controlling you and telling you you have to not wear your seatbelt or what you should believe in that regard i was giving a backstory in that but to tell me that on our platform we what we should and should not do no we weren't going to tolerate that you're not a captive audience. You've got the scroll thing. You can choose where you want to listen and where you don't. You can skip over something. You don't gotta watch it all. We're here to encourage, maybe, if you find something that's in, encouraging in here. If you don't, we don't, we're not the watchtower. We're not standing up and saying, if you don't listen to us, you're not gonna get everlasting life. You're gonna get eternal destruction if you're not watch, you know, listening to us. We're, we're not that way. We're here to encourage. We have our opinions on some issues. We recognize that you may disagree, but don't tell us what we should or should not do. He could have simply, when I retorted to him, said, no, I apologize, that's not what I meant. I should have changed my verbiage. Instead, he tried to defend his stand and talk about our demographics, which he has nothing, knows nothing about. We know exactly what our demographics is, who's watching, when they're on, when they're off. Maybe one time we can go through that and show you guys uh, all the back things that go on behind YouTube. A lot of people don't necessarily talk about that, but because the algorithm, you got to play their games. And it, it, anyway, we appreciate suggestions, um, and we appreciate those who value our opinions, mm -hmm. even though they may be different than their own. If you choose to disfellowship us because we have our opinions, that's your prerogative. And I have nothing, not a problem in the world with this guy having his own opinion on the, on the subject matter. And he can even share that on our platform if he wants. Just don't tell us what we need to do. What we're, what we, yeah, and it's really about censorship. There's enough censorship going on already in media and YouTube and different things. Um, it's our channel. We can say pretty much what we feel and what we want. Um, there was one other point I was going to say, but let you finish what you're Sorry. saying. Sorry. And you can interrupt me. You don't mind. I know. <laughs> yeah, we interrupt each other all the time. Just it's our channel, and if you don't like it, then don't watch. We're we don't have a channel where we are where we are um, making videos to please a crowd. We just say what our opinion is, and if you don't like it, don't watch it. We don't care. We you know this is not our way of making money. This is just a way of encouraging our little circle of friends we have, have here on YouTube. and It's a growing circle, and we're and not, is, we're and not looking for it to be a monster platform. And I choose the word yeah. platform over channel. Yeah. Wonder why. We're on a channel. <laughs> but I think platform is a word we yeah. I just consciously want to use. But I guess. I just, 
I mean, I know that there's a lot of channels or, or people on YouTube that it's their job. It's, yeah. it's what they are dependent on and they will please the masses as, as far as whatever is popular going through their, their, their group of people that are watching. Whatever right. pleases the group is what they're going to do a video on. And I just don't care. And I, by the way, I that's, talk about things and, that and if important. you look, research that, you can look it up. That's what the algorithms will tell you to do. Yeah. And even people who there are literally advisors like financial advisors, there are channel advisors that will talk to you about how you can get more views. Go on, look for video titles that have used the same title. Make sure that when you do your video, you mention the purpose of your video, along with your description, have that the first thing, and in your tags. I mean, these are all things they, they will advise you to do when you're doing a YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very uh, corporate. Mm -hmm. It's very corporate. Um, yeah. And if you, if you want to be promoted uh, by YouTube, the YouTube gods, then you have to serve their algorithms. So it's difficult enough to serve all these algorithms without also trying to have to please all the audience as well. And mm -hmm. so we, we have, again, we have, I was long fortuitous route, but we appreciate uh, the suggestions, do not appreciate trying to control the narrative of the platform. If you wanna do that, start your own Mm -hmm. uh, your own videos, that's fine. Your own platform to do that. You can share on ours, but it's narcissistic to come onto our platform and tell us what we should and what we should not do. Yep. And Appreciate a, your opinions. Again, you're welcome to share them. We're welcome to disagree. Right. And we may have a long discussion on there. Right. Um, I was going to say, this is what I was going to say, is as YouTube creators, we have the ability to give you the ability to comment or not comment. Right. And we appreciate the comments. Or to delete comments, which we yeah. don't do. We know we've seen a lot of people go, hey, where'd my comment go? We, we, we don't delete comments unless it has something that, I've had some disgusting comments that you know have a sexual nature or whatever else towards either of us, we delete those. Um, you know, so unless it's, or, or just absolutely laden with profanity, well, I shouldn't say profanity, it's not profane, it's, um, cuss words, if I'm going to be correct. I should do a video about that, too. Um, but or, then we'll de delete those. Um, or if there's some comment that is trying to be divisive between us. Yeah. If you're trying to divide us, that will not happen. Yeah, no, we don't tolerate that either. <clears throat> so even if we do have a subject matter, and we don't necessarily feel we have to agree. I take the seatbelt issue. She usually wears hers. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily wear mine. She understands my uh, stand on it. I understand hers. Um, we don't have to think the exact same way on everything. We're not Watchtower. Uh, so anyway, okay. thank you for the, the suggestion. And the suggestion is... The email. Do, 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 email. Yeah, and through any email, us through our unassigned blog, uh, by the way, which is unassignedblog at... Gmail.com. Gmail.com. Uh, also, do the like button uh, and the subscribe if you're not subscribed, if you want to get notifications, because as we mentioned, we don't necessarily... Yep. We don't necessarily put out videos to please the algorithms. So if you want to get notified, sometimes that's the only way. And we've even had subscribers say, I wasn't notified of that video. Where'd it come from? And it's like two or three times. And it's like, I have no idea how they work, you know? So sorry, I don't okay. know what to say on that. The email, we're already so far in. The email was about. So we put out a video that talked about what? Um, it was the video and we talked about marriage and specifically younger people, it was just a little clip. Which one was it? It was the, yeah, but it the talked suicide about, marriage. Marion yeah. and Lord, there was a suicide dependent because of Marion and Lord. But we talked a little bit about the difficulties of getting married and finding a relationship. And we talked, uh, hinted on that because they were a younger couple that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we, so we commented on getting married as a developing young adult. I think that but it be. was the guy who the elders harassed. I thought it was in that video. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, the the question was talking about was it specifically sisters? Yeah, I, oh, they said that sisters, older, like but we'll just twenty-five and older. Yep. That were not married. Do you want to just read the comment? And the difficulty of that. No, I don't think that's okay. We don't have it. Uh, it. Yeah, we just paraphrased it. We could pull it up and read it, but that's what it had to do with. 
Um, sisters, 25 and up, basically they weren't married in that younger bracket right off the bat, and yet mm-hmm. they have to deal with the, uh, uh, what, what's the word they used? The um, desperation. The desperation of wanting to be married, but now you've got this very limited pool to choose from. Mm-hmm. And just to be honest, it I know it's hard, but it's kind of a big problem that they write about. There's a lot of articles about this. Like, um, what do they say? Like, stay <laughs> like a eunuch for the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> stay loyal to Jehovah, you know. And just try to um, keep yourself busy in Jehovah's service is what they'll say in the articles, yep, right? Yeah, But I mean, I mean... Again, so we got all those articles, but I can't really mm-hmm. honestly think of any off the top of my head. It's it's kind of uh, not really any noteworthy ones, like it should be such a flood. We know a lot of people who just sort of make that impulsive marriage decision. You yeah. know, like maybe they're out of, de- out of desperation, like they settle. or Yeah, we know a lot of those type know, of people. <laughs> they, right. In the congregation, they'll just settle with somebody. I don't know. They called you desperate, right? Yeah, I mean, they said I was desperate, but that's only that's only because I wouldn't play the be happy game. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> and and I pretty much let it known that I wanted to be married. But to me, you know, being desperate is kind of uh, more like you're marrying the wrong person not doing your due diligence in in vetting the person. And most often that kind of shows up in the results of your marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I can think about the sister in Idaho, for example, Um, the older one, pioneer sister, her and her husband split up. I don't, I don't know any of the backstory or any of it, but they were split up and the congregation there was made up of two congregations that went to the same hall. He went to one hall and she went to the other, and they just kind of agreed to hate each other. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I didn't. Didn't the husband eventually just die then? So it was like they just lived their life out. Yep. And they never remarried. Neither one of them had grounds for a divorce. So here they are. Yeah, because they didn't have grounds. They remained loyal to Jehovah, just not to each other. <laughs> but yet they'll have different articles that talk about loyalty to your spouse is loyalty to Jehovah. <laughs> so it's right. that's kind of funny. I don't know, there was one sister that was kind of in that, I would, I don't want to say 25 is old, but, you know, that older than... That era. I guess, yeah. That was, She was kind of interested in you. Who? You know, I can't... Should I say her name? Like, no. <laughs> um, I don't know, there was a sister that was interested in you, you said. You know, that one that... I think she got... I think she did end up settling, like, she got married... And then married again, like divorced, married again, divorced. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Don't want to say your name. <laughs> yeah, I think it kind of, you know, it can be hard being a witness because, you know, as witnesses will put on such a fake front, it's so hard to tell who's being genuine. So you just, you know, they might be marrying for position or whatever. Yeah. And it, and it, uh... remember that, remember that brother <laughs> that pulled a knife? Oh, on his my, wife. Oh my God! Yeah, uh, that that totally got ugly. I should. So you want to tell that one? Or you want me to? You start. You start it because I think you were friends with him. They were in your congregation. Yeah. Okay. So so there's this elders family, and so he has a it sister. Was, it wasn't it the brother that you studied or that found you in the door to door work. Was yes. it his buddy? No. Buddy's son. It was his friend's no, son, they, right? They, so, yeah, the guy that found me in the door-to-door work, he handed it over to Elder. This is the Elder. And we kind of had a, he ended, we had a link because he, this guy had, this had worked in the Ford uh, factory. You know, he was from, I think, the, well, the Detroit area. Um, so he worked in the Ford factory, and I'm a Mustang guy. So, so you had common ground. Yes, yeah, so we had a common ground there. And he was, a, he was quite honestly, he was a really cool guy. I, I really liked him. And his sons weren't bad either. You know, so anyway, this sister, though, you'd think, you know, it's an elder. You're thinking it's a, it's a, a good family. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a good lineage. Mm-hmm. 
And I, I, there were three of the boys, I think, and they were all pretty cool. I don't remember the, the, the at all that point in time, they were all uh, still witnesses. Um, later on, I don't think any of them were. Uh, one of the older ones, he like got into music. And so he was like in Seattle and he'd like text me pictures of him and Sir Mix-a-Lot, <laughs> you know, uh, together. Um, so he was kind of in that scene uh, back in my... She's on Broadway. My cruising days there. Um, so, you know, they were pretty uh, cool people to hang out with. The, the, the guy we're talking about, he had a, a, a naked bike. If you don't know what that is, it's a crotch rocket without the fairing. Crotch rocket sport bike without the fairings on it. And they're detuned a little bit. I should tell that story. It's a pretty funny one. But he had a... <laughs> On All these stories. <laughs> we have so many stories. But uh, he he was uh, uh, like the he wasn't too boastful, but he was talking about how this bike was fast. Like, oh okay. And uh, so we get a ride together, and and uh, I had a buddy that was from the from the world that from way back, and I never ditched my friends. I never ditched my world my worldly friends. Um, I witnessed to them, but I I and they were cool with it. And sometimes they'd come to me for advice on the scriptures or, or you know, thoughts on the scriptures. Um, anyway, so I set up this ride. I think there were five of us, four of them brothers, my worldly br- and my worldly buddy. One of those five was me. Anyway, we're out riding. We get to back behind the mountain. If you could take, uh, what high was that, 95, up and over the mountain. You end up back there. There's some lake back there. And there's, like, this long straightaway that sp- splits the lake. And as we're coming from the main road on this road that splits the lake, we're like, you know, using it to goof off. We're cracking wheelies and doing whatever else. And as we get down to the other end and get turned around, um, we're both like, we're like all lining up and we all knew what was up, <laughs> you know? So uh, my brother, my buddy's bike from the world, his was a CBR 900 RR. And then the other guys were just like cruisers. And then uh, there's this guy that had the, the naked bike. And uh, we took off, and my buddy's bike from the world was pretty quick. You know, it was a 2000, I don't remember what year, six, I think. It was newer than mine was at the time. That was a brand new bike, I think, at the time. But That would have been before that, then. It would have been before that, because we moved here in 2006, so it would have been right before that, like a 2004, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I guess you're right. It was a brand new bike, I know that. Yeah, because we got married in 2003, and it would have been right then. And he was a crazy rider. Matter of fact, he I had to, good. he was good. He could have, he would have been race quality on a, on a, uh, but he was stupid too. His brother had died in a motorcycle wreck. I mean, I had to literally pull him aside and say, listen, you can't ride like that with these guys or with me. We can go, I'm no prude and we can go out and crack wheelies and goof off. Uh, maybe we can throw a couple pictures on there uh, if we've got any. Um, but I'm not gonna, uh, have you spilling your blood on my watch. You know, I'm, I'm not in favor of you driving like that. So crank it down. I mean, we'd come into a blind corner that he's never been on, on this ride. And he'd come in at 145, 150 miles per hour, and just lean it. He's got no idea what's going on or what's around the corner or if it's potholed or if there's a truck broke down or, or whatever, you know. You just can't see what's going Yeah. On. Anyway, so we're lining up on this straightaway, and, and they take off. My buddy's in the lead, and and, uh, and uh, the naked bike's, you know, not too far behind him, and I cracked a wheelie and wah, passed them all. That bike had, had quite a bit of power. Uh, anyway, but it was, uh, it was, he was a pretty cool guy to hang out with, I guess I can say that. But the, but the thing is, is that, as we mentioned, it's, it's hard to tell who's being, genuine and who's not and i'm not saying this guy wasn't genuine but that's the thing about that scripture that talks about being double sold um witnesses are required to live one persona that's so whitewashed that it's like they create this other persona so here you are and you, at the hall and out in service and, and with your witness what you need to act this way and anything else that doesn't necessarily fit into that even though it's not unbiblical We'll we'll throw it into this other persona. And so you've got these two personas, two lives you live, double-souled, double-hearted, and and split personality. And that's how it starts. And I could go into a long line of my background and my mother being split personality. Not going to get into that here and all the personalities and all the crazy things that happen. Um, But here you, you create this one persona, this personality, and that 
does all the witness things. And then you have this other personality persona that you do all the other things on. So it's really easy to take everything and shove that in there. So the person that you seem like you are, because like I said, he seemed like a pretty cool guy, very calm and mild. You wouldn't even know the other side of it. And so I guess to get, just to get into the, the story of it, they get married and within a year or so, yeah. they start having Probably. some pretty serious problems, it seems like. And I don't remember how much time goes on. And it, it finally culminates to where he pulls a, a, butcher, a butcher knife. knife. He pulls a butcher knife. And I don't know if his intent was on her or what it was, but during their argument, and he literally just starts Smash. hacking his own arm. And, and Look, you're doing this to me, saying yeah, comments like this. I mean, like, it's your fault, wife, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, oh, my God. To, to, to say the least, that relationship ended, and I don't know what happened. You know, she, she got, he got DF'd. Yeah. And then a few months later, he just sent her a message that said, you have grounds. And yeah. so she was free to remarry. Yeah. So I, sorry. Because she stayed a witness. And As far as we know at that point, you know, what happened after that. At that point, know. she stayed but, a witness. I'm sorry. But that whole idea that you just don't necessarily know who's got uh, the witness persona and then what's behind on the other side. You've got no way of knowing. You're not even allowed to hang out with the person without a chaperone. And we're all, we're all for the biblical um, thought of, you know, not, not sex before marriage. We're all for that, uh, that idea. If they want, but at the same time, Paul said, if they want to marry, let them marry. So don't be causing a hindrance to them. But this unscriptural adaptation to you have to have a uh, chaperone. Um, not that it's not a good idea. It's a great idea to have a chaperone. But wh how much room are you able to have with nobody else there if there's a chaperone to be able to talk about intimate issues like sex? Like, I mean, so how much are you going to end up knowing about them? Sadly... In a lot of cases, witnesses don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really good point as far as having an, an intimate conversation. Unless you have those intimate conversations on the phone or you have those intimate conversations without somebody there. Yeah. You know? So get, some things they're yeah. just between a, a you know a couple. You don't want anybody else knowing some of those things. Yeah, there are all sorts of things that aren't in the scriptures yeah. that a couple would need to talk about intimately. You know. Yeah, I'd for, I'd forgotten a lot of the details with that situation, but. Yeah. So what other ones? Oh. Um, let me think. There was an elder who left his wife. Yeah. So this guy. If it's the one I'm thinking of, younger guy. Yeah, wasn't yeah. he a servant? No, he was an elder. He was an elder oh, he when. Was an elder, okay. He was an elder when. That was that right when we just got when we weren't married very long. We weren't. You were. Yeah, when they. So here's the whole story. Okay. Yeah, I know he was somebody in the congregation. He was an elder, was and I know he was an elder because he sat in on my studies before I was baptized. I got handed off because I studied for like a long time, <laughs> so I got kind of juggled around, um, but. He was one of the elders that sat in on, on my study. So we get married and had our whole date only in the Lord thing. So we weren't, uh, and we should tell that whole story another time anyway. But we had invited, you had called his wife and invited them to our reception. Yeah. Because they weren't going to let us, we just got married at the courthouse. Right. We just went down, had paper signed, done, yeah. that's it. But we wanted to have a little reception, you know, to invite our families and our friends and, you know, whoever else. What a good way to and introduce. Thought, yeah, and we thought that, you know, we'd have support then. And we'd introduce witnesses to our family and whatever else, sort of, you know, have some sort of a understanding of each other. Maybe it'd be a good witness to our family. Nope. <laughs> uh, I, I called that sister and I said, I told her about the reception and she just very, like... Snottily. What a snot, yeah. And she's like, well, we won't be doing that. <laughs> Ooh, a little misjudgmental. Yeah. So the only... And this was a sister that pioneered with you. Yes. Spent all this time with you. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, so it was I was studying with... In the with... car group, I'm saying. Yep, yeah. so here I am studying with his, uh, her husband. We're out in service nonstop together because as soon as I got baptized, I was putting in pioneer, pioneer hours. 
Um, I mean, I just started going out in service, putting pioneer hours. And then it was like, they came to me and said, well, you might as well pioneer. I'm like, oh, okay. After you know? six months, then you yep. just said you would. And uh, anyway, because I just had the circumstance, you know, self-employed and, and uh, single. My uh, wife had left me uh, as I became a witness. And maybe we can talk about that another time. But I'd spent so much time with these people, so we were pretty close. And yet just to, to treat us like that was like, wow, that's a, that's a shocker. Matter of fact, I think only two witnesses, one of your aunts, not the one you lived with, showed mm -hmm. up. Yeah, and, and somebody else with her did too. I don't wasn't my cousin. It was like it was like my aunt and a friend, or my aunt and her sister, or something it's like married that. into the family aunt. And one pioneer sister showed up with. I think there might have she brought something with her, but she was like knew she shouldn't be there, <laughs> especially when none of none of the witnesses would show up. Oh, I know who showed up. Uh, that one couple, little dingy, yeah. but a great couple. Yeah, uh, would have your back no matter what. Yeah. Um. They were they were a, a nice couple. Yeah. Little dingy, but eh, aren't we all? Mm -hmm. But uh, so those were the only witnesses that were there, and they weren't uh, yuckety yucks in the congregation. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to uh, unless you're pious uh, maintain any rank. Yeah. So. So so. He ended after up after we were married. Their their rela their marriage started to kind of deteriorate, fall yeah. apart. Next thing we know, we go over there and and. <clears throat> He'd left her, and not a witness anymore. He's still not a witness, and people people that we've talked to have have said like he's just become very promiscuous and just sleeping with all kinds of different women, and you know it's not like he left her for one woman. He just and mind you, that's the, mind you, that's what life. they say. Yeah, we're not making that accusation. We don't know. I suppose that's true. Yeah. So, it, and of course they're gonna talk bad. You know, mm -hmm. who knows what goes on, but. It's interesting how witnesses will say, "Oh no, we don't, we don't talk about other people. We don't have rumors of that bull crap. You don't." Yeah, that's yeah. They love to talk about other people. So who else? Somebody else that has like settled. I'm trying to think of somebody else. Um, there was another sister. It's kind of a funny situation. I think this guy was a servant too. Lots. Right. Lots, if you're talking about the one I'm thinking about, Pioneer, sister. Pioneer, he's an MS. Sister, yes. And I think he was the one that did a bunch of like, he like worked the territory. Yeah, he, he reworked some, the territory. He, he did had, a great job. He had some kind of a job, computer job or whatever, where he could do like some fancy thing with the territories or something. He did an awesome job. Yep. And you just notice that, and it, it's so amazing because you'll see it, you'll see you know, a brother be giving parts, giving parts, and then all of a sudden it's like, what the hell happened? And, it's like you they know? and they're gone, it. and you just don't ever know what happened. But they put on such a good front, so it's like, how, it almost like you show up in the meeting, and then the next day they just left, you know. And yeah. you know that's not the way it happened. They just put on a show for the congregation or for their parents or for who, who, whoever for, like, a long time. They live a double life, kind of that persona you're talking yeah. about. Anyway... This sister, I mean, this brother left her, and when we would go out in service with her, she was like, oh, yeah, we're going to start a family, and she was, like, talking about things like this, and... She's the one, in fact, who had come up to me and said about uh, uh, children, there won't be children in the new system, because that was the oh, old doctrine, yeah. and she was crying, and I'm like... Uh, what scripture is that? In fact, you know, and then I, I think I've talked about this before. What scripture did I share with her again? Um, oh, it was the same thing with uh, another sister. Uh, we'll talk about that sister later, too. Um, the scripture's about... Um, the seven brides? Seven the, brothers, the seven, I mean. the seven brothers that have the wife? Why, what is... Okay, yeah, because you go back to the situation with Adam and Eve... And for this reason, you will leave your father and your mother and stick to your wife. So the reasoning was, there's not going to be any marriage in the new system. So obviously, you're not going to have any children in the new system. And that was the watchtower stand at the at the time. Mm -hmm. And now they just say, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I encouraged that sister with that scripture and said, so why wouldn't Jehovah satisfy the desire of every living thing, meaning you, when you're putting his will first in your life? Um, why wouldn't he do that and and she took solace in that but mm -hmm. at, at any rate 
he had left her. Yep, he, he met somebody at work, and he left her, and she was just absolutely broke. And spiritually, she was broke. And I remember she went to her sister's, like flew to her sister's, fleshly sister's house, and stayed a week, just tried to figure out and get her mind wrapped around what had happened. And then came back, and it was right about the time we moved here, so we just sort of lost touch with things, with you know, with each other. And then it wasn't too long she had met somebody from her work. I mean, this was like under a year yeah. after afterwards. She she was so like bitter over the situation. Here she here she had claimed she had done it right, you know, married a brother with good pedigree, so to speak. And yeah, all sorts of family in the truth. With two, position. Uh, two elders. I think even his dad might have been an dad. elder in another congregation. Mm-hmm. Yep, and so she was so bitter about it. She was like, "Forget it. I'm just gonna marry somebody who wants me, you know, as a person." And I, I want to say within like the year, she was married and pregnant because that's what she wanted. It was a family, and uh, and she married just some worldly guy. And he was a nice guy. I mean, he wasn't yep. some, you know, I think they're still married. As far yeah, as I, know. I think they are, and yeah. they have a family. They have some children. I don't know how many, but. Um, and I don't know. I think after a few years, she just quit the meeting. She just quit. She just quit. She just, mm-hmm. you know. And here, I think she was raised as a witness too, but yeah. that whole situation was. It'd be interesting if we could contact. Really, the yeah. problem is, there are so many people that fade because, and even people, we know lots of people that watch this channel or, or, or watch this platform mm-hmm. <laughs> and watch our videos, and, and they don't, uh, would never contact us because they're so fearful of of uh and some that do contact us but uh knowing full well that if they get caught it's just uh it's like a death sentence <laughs> yeah it, and it's just and using their family lose. as leverage against them you know it's the, yep. and they still it, it's not that they don't believe everything that witnesses say um so i won't we don't like as you watched our one video we don't fly for the pimo pomo junk um because Obviously, there are things you buy into and things that you may not, um, things you believe, things that you don't. Yeah. But, you know, Stereotypes. again, contacting yeah. us could be very dangerous. So, likewise, somebody like that, it's hard to touch base with them because they know if they develop any sort of contact with you, they could very well lose their family, you know, not if be able to care. talk to them at all right. if they care. Right? Right. right. But that sort of gets us into the next category of, so we've had, we've talked about people who have, just broke down and settled inside yeah. the religion. But how about those who have broke down and just not married in the Lord? They marry out of the Lord, so to speak. So here's that 65 fastback we picked up. She's kind of a rough one. We totally had some issues with the truck. Uh, thinking there was a problem. So we were not videoing at all, but this is my very first 65 Fastback that I've picked up, so that's kind of exciting. It is a fold-down seat car at least, but it needs floors, as you can see, and all sorts of everything, but all good parts in it for the most part. But, uh... Definitely a heavy, heavy project car. And then it ended up being that I've been driving with my uh, turbo clamp loose on the, uh, just after the turbo goes into the, uh, before it goes into the intercooler. So now we tighten that up. Hopefully it'll be good. But anyway. So it's uh, again October and we've got a little skiff of snow, but not nothing like they're getting south. So today they're getting blasted again. So I'm happy that we're not. But there's barely any wind today if you hear. So I'm taking the opportunity to weld up some more cracks on my trailer. This was actually broken off. And this whole cajoled setup here, that's the right word, contraption uh was to get this back in alignment with this it was offset this direction and when i jacked it up and when i hammered it and when i tried prying it nothing would work so i took this channel which i'm going to 
cut and put into here and weld up all the way around. Um, but I put that channel in there, jacked it up at an angle so it would push it in. And the chains are actually to keep the jack from sliding out, which it all worked fairly decent. So now it's all welded. I will grind that smooth. And like I said, we're gonna put a I'm gonna put a triangular plate like I did over there. Uh, my gloves aren't gonna let me zoom, are they? Right there. I put a triangular plate in there to reinforce it back there. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. Anyway. But I'll just cut this to this dimension and weld it in there solid. That ought to firm that up pretty good. I don't know if I'll weld the other side as well to box it in or if I'll leave it open so that way it can drain off. But I gotta do the other side too. You can see over there all of the cracks on that side too. Can see that enough? Right there in front of the tire where it notches down, there's big old cracks that run up. Maybe now you can see it. Ugly, 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 ugly. But at least that one's not totally broke off like this one was. So it should be easy to line up again. So, more welding projects. I did mount my uh, fifth wheel setup. Uh, not where it's supposed to be mounted. Aha, a little hornet. I like that cold weather. Anyway, uh, I mounted it back and I drilled holes to where it's supposed to be too. These are just bolted on so I can move the empty trailer easily without having to worry about clearing my toolboxes and whatever else. But more welding projects. I uh, was sick of this thing breaking off. This thing has been hokey since day one. And apparently when they put this bed on, they did this collaboration mess. Wow, look at how bent that is. I never saw that before. Never saw that before. Anyway. And they apparently cut off. I don't know if they had a square one, a small one in here or a longer square. Like a rectangle. Anyway, moved it to the edge to where it's barely attached. And this thing has just been cobbled together trying to get support and it never worked so finally just cut the dang thing out and we're going to try to put this beast in here or some sort of a our own cobble job that's more sturdy but that's pretty amazing that's pretty bent up but that doesn't seem like it would be no that bent the wrong way maybe it's supposed to have a camber to it uh, i don't think so looks like it's twisted Anyway, it was always breaking and I was, somebody else cobbled it, cobbled it and cobbled it and I've been under there trying to cobble it and weld it together and welded tabs on it to try and keep it from breaking off. I welded that big old chunk on there and welded to the frame, which wasn't enough, it never took. Anyway, so hopefully it just wasn't enough. Hopefully we can get this thing put back together good. Well, I didn't get a chance to video what I did. I ended up having to build something well, almost from scratch. I did have a receiver set up already and it was on a two and a half inch bar instead of a two inch bar. And then I welded in a four inch bar, four inch by two inch square tubing. I shouldn't say bar, I should say tubing. And then, uh, so they kind of see it and welded it to the bracket that we had in there in the first place. I don't know if I can get under there and see that or not. Maybe. Anyway, it should work. Hopefully it's strong enough. Now at least there's solid welds because you're able to not be welding upside down with a bunch of dirty junk. You can actually weld with uh, it out in front of you looking at it. So hopefully that all sturdies up. I don't even think I ever took a video of this either. I finished all this up and boxed it in under here. But 
we put a piece of a channel that goes up and down right there and then uh, boxed it in with more steel and then gusseted it so it's like totally boxed in there and on the back side as well so that should firm that all up as well anyway not that you care much about that stuff so the wind is blowing pretty good today I'd say we're getting uh, when a gust comes along it says we're getting 60 mile per hour gusts and the noon bell and uh, our neighbor's roof right there a uh, little bit's coming off of that ridge I'm sure the one we just got done doing that's the guest house right there the one we're videoing our restoration on or at least sharing the videos of our restoration on I'm sure the roof on that should be fine it's like a hundred and sixty mile per hour blow off warranty so anyway and it's got a pitch to it and everything else but yeah the neighbor's house over here I'm up on the top floor of our house but if we come over to this window our neighbor's house over here has quite the section blown off on it and I think it even blew up over the front and hit their car and then there's a little bit right there that's blown off in the center too I don't know if you can see that or not but pretty good patch back there that was blown off yeah, you can see it flipping up there. Yeah, it's blowing pretty good out there today. So we're not going to start the roof today. Might get a go down and get some tarps and whatever else to start the roof on this house, but our house, the one I'm standing in. But I don't think we'll be getting up there today, but this uh, wind is blowing in some warm weather, so it's the perfect opportunity. It's melting the snow that we had, and we've got a pretty good uh, opportunity to roof this house, so get cracking into that. So we had a, some pretty good wind that knocked a branch out of a tree, apparently. Yeah. It came out that way. Yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to blow off our roof, just our neighbors. Just pieces, huh? We've got about a five day window here. So uh, I guess we better get to it. You just need to get it dried in. You already ripped your coat, huh? Yeah, I did. I snagged it on a nail. Roofing is very hard on. I'm wearing crappy clothes, but I just still. Clothes. I haven't even gotten up there yet, and I've already ripped my clothes. Well, let's get to it. Okay. Guess there's no going back now. <laughs> He's gonna try to get that big, huge rolled flashing, the valley flashing. This is gonna either be good or okay. Here we go. By the way, Chad does have a line, line on it. Not well. I'm actually really mad. Well, I shouldn't say it like that, but I'm frustrated. Nobody hardly has seen me mad. They don't want to. <laughs> All right, I've got to go help. Okay, next day, our mailman's coming down the sidewalk. So we worked till dark. We didn't even dry in because we knew it wasn't going to rain or anything. So 
this morning we had to go to all of our buildings and grab metal and some fascia boards and some more um, edge metal. And now Chad is gonna replace that fascia board and the reason why that's filled like that is because we had to do like a makeshift repair because we had a squirrels living in there and he's ripping that all apart now to replace it. So then we'll dry this in today and get this all really good. So we got a gorgeous night by the way. Sunset was amazing. The clouds are pink clear all the way around. Even over here. Anyway, it's way pinker in the uh, in real life than the screen. But we got this side done and dried in. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see if I can zoom. Hard to see a pitch when you're looking right down at it. And we also got this side tore off on this front corner. Yeah, you can't see it at all. Never mind. <laughs> right there in this corner here going, there's a valley there we got that torn off it's just a gorgeous day today it was mid 50s probably and you still can't see it but it's right uh, in there No way you can see it. But just a beautiful day today. I was gonna go over to the other house over there. So this is where our house we live in is, and that's the other house right there that we just got done restoring. It's on the other corner. But I was going to go up there and get a couple of pictures. It's got to be absolutely fabulous, the view from up there. Anyway, time to get something to eat. Okay, so we're in the top of the other house. Climbing up the ladder. Because there is a pretty striking sunset tonight. Yeah, that's fabulous. The camera doesn't do it justice, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty. It's because it's so smoky out. Yeah, everybody's burning. You can smell the smoke in the air too. They'll burn the cattails out is what they'll do. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. It's been a beautiful few days. Yeah, all the construction around here has been, like workers have been really grateful to have a few days of nice weather, including us. It's about an 80% chance that you get November with not being winter. But this is rare. I mean, it's not like it's impossible, but obviously, but I think in all the, what have we had two or three years, it's been like this in the 15 years we've been here. Yeah, yep. Where we've had like a little stretch of really nice weather. You can see our house though from here, what we've done. Oh yeah, you can. So, uh... Of course, the valleys, um, this, what you can't see, that's also done too. Yeah, so the, what I did on the right is what I videoed yesterday. Then we did the tear off on the left today, and this side is done as well. Uh, this side right here is done, tore off. Right now you can see I've got a ladder up right there and we're just doing some ice and water on that section but and then on the other side like if you take the, the dormer that we can see the windows on all the way across to where the yep. chimney is on the north side right here or south side of me yep 
on over the here. other valley down, that one's done too. Yep, on the back side here is finished. Over there is done. Yeah, but that is just a beautiful sunset. I wonder how it'll come off the clouds here. I think it'll be prettier tonight than it was yesterday. There was some, uh, uh, clouds yesterday though and there's really no clouds we'll see what it happens when it goes down but. so we were talking today about the house you know those some of those boards are like 20 inches I yeah i'm so filthy right now don't even record me <laughs> <laughs> um but some more like 20 inches and i always think when we do a roof that's an old house like this uh, when they built it, you know what it took because they didn't have they didn't have trucks and stuff like that pre 1900. But the train is the depot's right there. Of course, the depot's been moved a few blocks. It was down there a little farther, but the tracks go right here. Yeah, and so they could probably just put it on a wagon and you know. And, and so the carriage went over. The depot, it's it's tough to see it. I think through the trees, but. This house straight beyond it right there is the depot behind those trees. So it's the library now. And we actually made a sign for it that says uh, Historic Train Depot Library because they had some leaning over junky sign that just said library. I've never seen the lights from this angle from our flickering lights, our, our sidewalk lights. Our sidewalk again. posts. It really is a beautiful little Victorian hot town. And then we own this one right here as well, this Victorian right there. And that used to have a monster spire on the top of it, but the tornado in 1909, I think, took it off. It decimated this house right here, totally blew it in half, and they rebuilt it with it. They just used the same bricks. With the we exact have same bricks, yeah. We have pictures of that tornado, but they just used the same bricks. And those are locally made bricks. Yeah, come out of the brick mines in Wahala or Valhalla, depending on whether you use the transliteration in English or not. But yeah, that sun's... It, it doesn't really even do it justice in here. I wish there was some sort of a filter where I could match what it looks like in real life compared to what that is I would say it's it's way more pink I'll say that you can hear it sizzling in the ground that's right it's dropping off into the ocean losing fuel. <laughs> and then there's another Victorian house with the turret that's right here um, I, maybe I can get a better view from over here don't step in the hole right here this yellow one on the corner has a turret on it and then across the way, that blue house and gray house right there has a turret as well. And that's a pretty neat old Victorian house there. That is now the funeral home. But this is sort of the historic, I guess you'd call it district, neighborhood, whatever, where all the old original homes are. You can see the whole, I don't know, river, reservoir, whatever you want to call it, it winds out. So it's quite the striking view from up here. Where's the pond at? Usually you can see, isn't it just right over there? It's straight across, you can't see it from the trees, but there's a pretty good sized pond. But I can't see it. Yeah. I don't know how long ago it stopped on me, but... But we had like, I don't know, maybe maybe 20 mile per hour winds today. Maybe it gusted that high, so it wasn't even that. But. And we're not supposed to get rain for another, what, three days? Four yeah. Days? And it, I'm just happy it ain't snow. Same. Can you, can you do this? Yep. Should have brought that foam over so we could seal it. Yeah, we should have, but we got our weed. Yep. Oh, my hands hurt so bad. Blister. 
just gripping crap, gripping the roof, tucking down, using the bar. Uh, hurts. It's turning pretty pink now. It's turning pretty pink now. Yep. I should have brought me up a hard cider. All right, just a minute. 